Beauty and the Beast. This is actually the first animated feature to be nominated for a Best Picture Award. Uh, well, yeah, a Best Picture Award for, at the Academy Awards. And everybody declares this one as the absolute best of the Disney Princess movies. And, well, yeah, I agree. But there's actually one Disney, well, Disney animated film that I declare to be the absolute best Disney Princess movie ever. All right, well, we're gonna do, we're gonna get that to that one soon, very soon. But um, uh, but yeah, we all know. I mean, yeah, I can see why Beauty and the Beast is an, it's an absolute masterpiece of animation. Uh, but uh, on uh, yeah, let's talk about the story. All right, it's about oh uh, the uh, the film does open up. Uh, with a uh, with a stained glass window backstory on how the beast turn well how the prince turned into a beast, Always, but that but while that's going on, there's a little there's a teen there's a girl named Belle played by I uh, played by Paige O'Hara, or uh, is basically the oddball of the entire town, or uh, it's because she's actually wearing a blue dress, or uh, and and uh, pe and uh, she's basically a bookworm, um, though like people think that she's weird because she's reading that she always read books. But a guy named Gaston appears and basically is in love with her. And since he thinks that he's the best looking in town, he, th she, he thinks he's the, uh, the most beautiful girl in the entire village. Uh, so they got, so he basically wants to marry her. Uh, but she basically turns him down. But that's that happened. He does he wants to go to desperate measures. Uh, but while that's going while that's going on, her father or the father's Bell. I'm mean, sorry, Bell's father Maurice always uh, leaves town. Oh, because he wants to go because he's leaving for a fair because he made a. Or, um, a wood cutting like, machine, whatever the heck it is. Or, but uh, he, he gets lost in the woods, and then he comes across the enchanted castle, or where the beast lives. Or, and he sees the other characters in the movie, or, like a candlestick named named, named Lumiere, or played by Jerry Ostbach, or I think that's how you pronounce his name. I mean, uh, Cogsworth played by David Augenstiers. This is Potts played by or Angela Lansbury, and her son and a little son named Chip. Uh, but the beast come. But the beast, played by Robbie Benson, comes in, on and uh, takes the Maurice away and locks him up into his dungeon. On uh, Bell's, I mean her father's horse, Philippe, uh, comes down to the town and on uh, tells Bell. And well, basically, he uh, hurries back to town to find Bell, and then it goes to the castle. Bell finds the father and then exchange and uh, tells the beast that he uh, will exchange her life for his. And on uh, she. And uh, since now she's a prince, a prisoner, or of the beast, or is, uh, what she doesn't know is that, or that the rose, or that the beast has, is basically, we a magical rose, and he, and, on uh, the petal falls, because it's basically telling time, right? Because of it, because if the last petal falls, he will remain a beast, and everybody else will remain, on uh, antiques, and. Oh, nah, but if he does fall in love and the lady does fall in love and return, he'll go back to being a human being. Wait, so it took like it's so it's it's not like a three day romance in this film, but it does, but uh, uh, but it uh, actually like took like months or, or well not like years, but it probably took like months or something like a couple months, and then basically they were meant f they basically form a beautiful friend a beautiful uh, relationship, but uh but Belle oh, basically. Oh, he finds out that her father is still sick, and the beast lets her go. Oh, and then gets and she heads back home, and then gets on, and the up and the angry mob, uh, basically tries to take Maurice away because they thought he was crazy. Or right, because Gaston hired, or oh, an owner of an asylum played by Tony J. Or oh, to bring him to the insane asylum. But she backs it up, But she reveals what the beast looked like to sh to prove that her father is innocent. Or right, they basically sent him up for an angry mob song. Long and then they head to the castle, and then you already know the rest of the story. So, what can else can I say about this film that everybody else has? Do you think? Well, the uh, the characters are incredibly unforgettable. They are one of the best things in Disney history. Uh, Belle is a great main character. Her voice is wonderful, and she has a great singing voice. Uh, Gaston is a great villain. He's basically not just like your typical. Oh, I'm just a villain because I'm just a villain. He's actually. Starts off like as a town hero, but then after he loses um his bride, but he uh he definitely swears to get his bride though since Belle he since he really loves Belle. But uh his assistant LeFou is hilarious, or as he gets a few good lines. I love Lumiere, or right, he's like the best side character in the movie for me, and I do love Cogsworth. Angela Lansbury does a great job as Mrs. Potts. I 
I uh, I love the songs done by Alan Menken, but my absolute favorite part of the movie is the Beast. He is one of my favorite Disney characters. I absolutely love his speaking voice, at least when he's the actual Beast. His design is amazing, and it's so much fun to look at. Uh, and whenever he talks, it's so cool. Oh, um, oh, my! The funniest part of the movie was the Beast. It's when he uh, he, or he makes Belle come to dinner with him, like. I thought I told you to come down to dinner. Uh, you come out of our... Uh, I'll back down the door. Uh, master, uh, I might be wrong, but that may not be the best way to win the girl's affections. Please attempt to be a gentleman. Uh, but she's being so difficult. Gently, gently. Will you come down to dinner? No. <laughs> When he makes that face, it cracks me up. Oh, but I'm like, he's like, and I love how he's like, it would give me great pleasure if you would join me for dinner. Uh, let me see, please. Please. No, thank you. You can't stay in there forever. Yes, I can. Fine. Then go ahead and starve. Oh, if she doesn't eat with me, then she doesn't eat at all. That is a great voice. That's why I love the character. Uh, even his uh, character, him, I mean, well, everything about him is just so flawless. Even the rest of the film is so flawless. The songs are excellent. Uh, and hell, it's Alan Macon. Any, any songs he makes, it, it's just amazing. Uh, but, uh, but it's actually not my number one favorite or uh, soundtrack, though. But my favorite song in the movie is, of course, Be Our Guest. Uh, I've always loved listening to that song. Uh, every time I look. Uh, but, um... But if you do see the movie, like, if you actually see the movie again, there's actually an extended cut on DVD and the Blu-ray releases. Oh, it's because they added one new scene, and it's a new song called Oh, the Human Again. Oh, and they, uh, the way it's animated, it looks like it's basically, like, that could be its own movie or something. But, um, but I say that one's worth watching than the, uh, the original cut, to be a little honest. Oh, it's because it makes the experience a little bit more fascinating. But yeah, Beauty and the Beast is definitely a flawless film. Well, from the minute that you watch it. And when I uh, the um uh, when, uh, when you do see the movie, oh yeah, um, uh, just check it on uh D well buy it on DVD or something. But uh, if you haven't seen Beauty and the Beast yet, definitely check it out. I'm the Bostonian Critic. I'm sending you out. And if you like what you see here, click like on the video and subscribe. And and uh, follow me on Twitter or Facebook. And I will see you later on. Take care.